In this lecture, we are going to learn how we can pass custom data to a reducer function for changing the state. So for that, let's go to VS Code. And here, in this counter component, I'm going to create a new child component. So inside this counter folder, I want to create a new component. And for that, let's say ng generate component. We want to generate a component inside the counter folder. And I'm going to call this component as custom input. Okay, let's press enter. So you will notice that inside this counter folder, a new folder called custom input has been created. And in that folder, we have all the files related to custom input component. So the name of the component is custom input component. And for that, the selector is app custom input. So I'm going to use this custom input component inside the counter component. So let's open counter component.html. And here, I'm going to use the selector of that component. Let's save the changes. Let's go to our application. And there you will see it says custom input works. So basically it is rendering the view template of custom input component. It is rendering this paragraph. Now here I'm going to add some HTML. And again, in order to save some time, I have already written that HTML. So I'll copy it from here. Let's go to VS code and let's paste it here. Okay, and from here, let me remove this ng model for now. Let's save the changes. And I have also written some CSS. So I will also grab that CSS from this text file. And let's open custom input component.css. And there, let's paste it. Okay, let's save the changes. And for now, I'll close this terminal. Now, if I go to our application, now you will see that here a new component called custom input component has been added. And in that custom input component, we have a text box where I can enter some value and we have this increment by button. Now, what I want is whatever value is entered in this text box. So let's say here I enter 40. And when I click on this increment by button, it should add that 40 to the current value of the counter. So let's say the current value of the counter is maybe 10. And then inside this text box, I have entered 40 and I have clicked on this increment by button. So what should happen is this 40 should be added to the current value of the counter. If I enter, let's say 100, then that 100 should be added to the current value of the counter. Let's see how we can do that. For that, what we need to do is when this button is clicked, we need to do two things. First, read the value entered in this text box. And second, dispatch an action, which should change the state of the counter by adding the red value to the current value of the counter. Let's do this. So let's go back to VS Code. Let me close this CSS file. And let's also close this counter component.html file. And here, what I'm going to do is, first of all, let's open custom input component.ts file and there I am going to create a property let's say custom value this is going to be of type number and initially let's set it with the value 0 let's save the changes and now let's go to custom input component.html there on this input element inside which the user will enter a number there I am going to use two-way data binding so for that we are going to use ng model and I want to bind, I want to do two way data binding with the custom value property. Okay, so here we have an error because here we are trying to use ng model. And in order to use this ng model, what we also need to do is we need to import forms module in app module.ts file. So in the import array, let's go ahead and let's import forms module. And to use this forms module, we also need to import it from angular slash forms. Okay, let's save the changes and let's close this file. So now that error should be gone. And if I go back now, you will see that in the input, this zero is already rendered. If I go ahead and if I change the initial value as 10, in that case, you see in the input box, 10 is rendered. So there is a two-way data binding between this input element and this 
custom value property. If I go ahead and if I enter 100 here, then 100 will be assigned to this custom value property because of two-way data binding. The second thing which we are going to do is on this button element, we are going to bind click event. And here, let's say when the click event happens, we want to call a method on custom value button clicked. You can provide a more meaningful and shorter name here, but I'm going to call it as on custom value button clicked. Okay, let's copy this method name. Let's go to our custom input component.ts and let's create that method. And from within this method, what do we want to do? We want to dispatch an action. So for that, first of all, let's go ahead and let's create an action. So inside this states folder, let's go to counter.action.ts and here I'm going to create a new action and export it. So here let's say export const and let's call this action as custom increment. Okay, and to create an action, again, we need to use the create action method. Here, we also need to provide a name for this action. So here I'm going to call it as custom increment. So I'll copy this name and I'll pass it here and remember that when this action will be raised at that time we are also going to pass some data now since we want to pass some data here we are going to use props and to use this props we need to import it from ngrx store and in here we need to specify what type of data we are going to pass so here i'm going to specify an object so we are going to pass an object and in that object, we will have a value property. And this value property is going to store a numeric value. So I'll specify the type as number. Okay. And after that, after the closing angle brackets, we also need to use a set of parentheses to invoke this. Okay. Let's save the changes. So here we have created an action. Now, in order to handle this action, we are going to create a reducer. So let's close this file and let's open counter reducer.ts and here again i'll use a comma then to the on method we are going to specify the name of the action which we are going to handle here i'm going to handle custom increment action and whenever this action happens i want to execute a function so for that i'm using this arrow function syntax here this function is going to receive a state and this function is also going to receive some payload, some data. And for that, we are going to specify the second argument. So here I'm going to call the second argument as action. Okay, you can name the second argument anything, but the convention is to call it as action. So the first argument will always be the state, which is going to receive the current state. And the second argument is the action, which is going to receive the payload, the data for that action. From within this method, we are simply going to return a new state where first we are going to get all the existing properties of the state and then there we are going to change the counter property of that state now how are we going to change the counter property so first we are going to get the current value of the counter so for that we can say state dot counter because we know that this state is going to store our counter state and there we have a counter property and to that I want to add something so I want to add the value which the user has entered in the input box now how are we going to get that value so for that what I'm going to do is currently I'm going to keep it as it is but I want to show you in the payload what we are going to receive so here I'm going to log the action all right let's save the changes here let's also save the changes here in this html file and let's go to our application let's open developer console and also if you see currently the value which is entered in this input box is 10 that's because in the custom input i have initialized this custom value with the value 10 so i'm going to make it as zero let's go back to our application let's go to console let's clear everything here and here let me enter 
20 and let's click on this increment by button now here nothing has happened now why nothing is happening because we are not dispatching the action which we have created so here we have created this custom increment action right so we need to dispatch this action and only when we dispatch the action the reducer function will be called so let's go to custom input component ts file and in here we are going to inject an instance of store so again i am going to create a constructor here and in this constructor we are going to create a private property i'm going to call it as store and this store is going to be of type store which we need to import from ngrx store and here we also need to specify the type for the state which we are going to use here we are going to use the counter state which is going to be of type counter state and to use this counter state in this file we need to import it once we have this store injected in this custom input component from within this method and remember that this method will be called whenever increment by button is clicked so from within this method we are going to dispatch an action and to dispatch an action we need to use the store instance and on that we are going to call the dispatch method and to this dispatch method we need to specify what action do we want to dispatch here i want to dispatch custom increment action and we need to call it like a function and here since whenever this action is dispatched we also need to pass a payload here i'm going to pass an object in that object i'm going to specify a value property and i'm going to assign this value property with the value stored in this custom value property so here i'll say this dot custom value all right now since we are dispatching this custom increment action whenever this action is dispatched its reducer will be called and in the reducer what we are doing so let me also open the reducer file in the reducer we know that this action is going to receive the payload which we are passing so inside this reducer function first we are logging that action and then we are returning a new state so now let's go to our application before that let me save the changes here let's clear everything and here let me enter 20 and let's click on this increment by button and here you will see that an object has been logged and in that object we have two properties this value property which is assigned with the value 20 and here you see this value 20 is read as a string value right so what we are going to do is here when we are assigning this value property with the custom value first we are going to convert it to number type and then we are going to assign it and now if i go back and here let me enter 20 again and when i click on this custom increment button you see now this 20 is logged as a numeric value so here the action when we are logging action in the reducer function that action parameter is logging an object where we have the value property and type property the type property tells which type of action has been dispatched that means for which type of action the reducer function has been called and then this value is basically the value property which we have specified here and the 20 is the value which is entered in this text box so now what we can do is we can go back to the reducer function and here to the current value we want to add the value from this payload so this action it is storing an object on that object we have a value property from there we are going to read the numeric value and we are going to add it to the counter so if i save the changes here and if we go back to our application now let me increment the counter value to let's say 10 and here let me enter 25 so now when i click on this increment by button it should add this 25 to the current value of the counter so the result should be 35 if i click on this you see the result is 35 and here that action parameter is also logged and in that action parameter we have our custom value which we are passing and the type for which the reducer function has been called so now i'm going to remove this console.log statement from here i just wanted to show you how the payload will look like 
So the payload will always have an extra type property which will tell what type of action has been dispatched for which the reducer function is called. Let's see if the changes. So this is how we can pass data whenever an action is dispatched to the reducer function. For that we need to do two things. The first thing will be, so let me close this custom input component.html. So the first thing will be when we are creating an action, there we need to specify what type of data will be emitted when that action is dispatched. And in the reducer, we also need to specify the second parameter, which is going to receive that data. Now, when the data will be passed, the data will be passed whenever we are dispatching an action. So here we are dispatching this custom increment action. With that, we need to pass the data as an argument to that action function. So this is all I wanted to cover in this lecture. If you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.